Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to another live service of Hand to God, formerly the House of Prayer for All Nations and Promised Land Complex Church. We're now the Hand of God. Yes, sir. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. I'm an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for tuning in to this live recording of our, our television, our weekly Sabbath, our weekly service. We cele celebrate Jesus every week on Saturday, usually at 10 o'clock. But our recording studio service is usually earlier. We do two services on Saturdays here in Columbus, Ohio, located at 6178 Bush Boulevard, Columbus, Ohio. If you ever need us, call us at 614-723-9770. Once again, my name is Sean Henry Scott. I'm the apostle on the body of Jesus Christ. And we're talking again. Today is March the 16th, and we're still in Miracle March. We're talking about miracles this is the, the month that we believe that God has ordained for some to receive their miracles. So we call this Miracle March. And today's topic for Miracle March, it is, it is not too late for your miracle. It is not too late for your miracle. And if you have your Bibles, you can begin to turn to Matthew 9. We're going to read verses 18 through 26. That's chapter, Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 to 26. And let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we've come to worship you, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. We just ask and pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, there's somebody out there in, in the internet world, Father God, there's somebody out there that may not have an opportunity to go to church or to get and receive your word. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God, to send your word out, to go out and bless those who are in need of a word, Father God. We thank you and pray, Father God, that the word comes through with clarity and understanding. Let the meditation of my heart, Father God, and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight, Lord Jesus. I thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Once again, this is Miracle March. We're believing God for your miracle. Last week, we had our first teaching or preaching on, on miracles. And we came out of Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. And this week... We're also coming out of Matthew chapter 9, 18 through 26, and it's Miracle March. Once again, a miracle is an extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. A miracle is an event contrary to the established laws of nature and attributed to the supernatural cause. Uh, one last definition of miracles are those acts that only God can perform, usually superseding natural law, Baker's Dictionary of the Bible defines a miracle as an event in an external world brought by an immediate agency or a simple volition of God. It goes on to add that a miracle occurs to show that the power behind it is not limited to the laws of matter or mind as it interrupts fixed natural laws, so the term supernatural applies quite accurately. So a miracle is something that's supernatural that interrupts the natural. And a lot of us right now that are watching may need a miracle. You may be in need of a miracle. You may need a miracle in your health. You may need a miracle in your finances. You may need a miracle just in your life overall. You've gotten a bad report and the doctor has told you something and you just don't want to believe it. Well, let me hear, I'm here to tell you right now today that this is Miracle March and you can receive your miracle. You can receive your miracle today. You can receive your miracle right now. The minute you believe in Jesus Christ, you can receive your miracle. Let us turn to the Matthew chapter 9. Like I said, we're going to read verses 18 through 26. And it goes on to say, verses 18, While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. Excuse me. While he spake unto these things, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Verses 19, and he said, and Jesus arose and followed him. And so did his disciples. Verse 20, and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Verse 21, for she said within herself, if I, be made, if I may but touch the, his hem, his garment, I shall be whole. Verses 22, but Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith 
hath made thee whole. And the woman was whole from that hour. Verses 23, and when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the, the minstrels and the people making noise, verse 24, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And, he li and they laughed him to scorn. Verses 25 says, But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. Verses 26, finally, And the fame thereof went abroad into the land. So we see in that verse of scripture that two supernatural miracles up, uh, happened. And what I, well, today's subject in Miracle March is, it is not too late for your miracle. It is not too late for your miracle. This is our second week talking about miracles, and I am compelled to remind you that regardless of how bad something appears and hopeless, it is not too late for your miracle. It is not too late for your miracle. I want you to hear that. If you hear nothing else from me today, it is not too late for your miracle. Regardless of the situations or the circumstances, it is not too late for your miracle. In verse 18, the Bible lets us know that the guy seeking a miracle was a ruler. And he came to Jesus worshiping him. Worship means to come in reverent love and devotion. It is how we come to Jesus. That is one of the ways we come to Jesus. We found out last week that the centurion soldier came to Jesus beseeching him, which means to fervently ask somebody something. Last week, the centurion soldier came to Jesus beseeching him, which is to fervently ask somebody something. This week, we see a ruler coming to Jesus, worshiping him. So right there, we see two main ways you can come to Jesus to receive your miracle. Beseeching and worshiping him. And worshiping was reverent love and devotion. Is how he came to Jesus. He told Jesus, my daughter is now dead. But come and lay your hand upon her, and, and she shall live. That was verse 10. And in verse 19, Jesus arose and followed him. Verses 20 to 22, Jesus was on his way to help the ruler. And, he, and behold, a woman needed a miracle, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. She said within herself, if I can touch him, I will be made whole. Jesus turned when he saw her and said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was whole from that very hour. In verses 24, I'm just giving some points from these verses before I get into it. Jesus said to the maid, Jesus said, the maid is not dead, but sleep. And they laughed him to scorn. In verse 25, when the people was put forth, Jesus went in, took her by the hand, and the maid arose. So we see through, through, this, through that text of scripture from verses 18 through 26, really two miracles occurred. Two miracles occurred. One was the woman with the issue of blood for, for 12 years, as the Bible says. She had probably went to see physicians. Uh, in, in the other Gospels, it talked about how she spent all her money going to see doctors, physicians. 12 years. Some of you have been waiting a long, long time for your miracle. A long time. I know I've been waiting a long time for certain things to happen in my life. A long time. In some, in some, some form, some, I've been waiting 20 years in particular for a particular miracle to happen. So some, in some cases, we've been waiting a long time for miracles to happen in our, in our lives. And I've come to tell you today, it is not too late. Do not give up hope. Do not lose your faith. What I always do is I want to give key points from the scripture text in order for you to receive your miracle. If you're taking notes or if you're able to play this back, I want to give some key points that when I, in my prayer and meditation, when God gave me the story, he gave me some key points which is going to help you receive your miracle. Number one point can be found in the first verse. It says, in, in, in last week's concerning the tenure servant, he approached Jesus by beseeching him fervently. So I spoke on that already. There's two ways you can come to Jesus. You always have to come correct. First of all, we got to understand who Jesus is. The centurion soldier last week recognized he was on his post doing his job. He probably recognized that Jesus was a man of authority because he says, you're a man of authority, just like I am. If I tell this one to go, he goes. I tell this one to come, he comes. So he beseeched Jesus fervently on his service behalf. This week, we see the man beseeching, uh, worshiping Jesus. So there's two different ways you can come to Jesus to receive your miracle. You can worship him or you can come to him, you can go beseeching him. 
So that's very key. There's different ways to approach Jesus to receive your miracle. So don't look at somebody and say, well, they ain't going to get in touch with God because they ain't coming right. Everybody goes to Jesus in the way that they're compelled to. Some people are beseeching him. Some people may be worshiping him. But it's not too late. And by worshiping him, so we see the two ways to get to Jesus to get your miracle. In verse 18, he immediately told Jesus his daughter was now dead, but come lay your hand upon her, and she shall live. In doing so, he displayed the faith he had in Jesus to get his miracle. However you choose to come to Jesus, it has to be by faith. The definition can be, of faith can be found in Hebrews 11.6. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You have to believe by faith that you're going to get your miracle. When you go to Jesus, now obviously we can't go to a physical Jesus, but when you go to Jesus in prayer or you go to Jesus in praising or higher, if you're watching this and you decide to believe God for your miracle, your heart needs to be right. Your mind needs to be right. You can't just come to Jesus any kind of old way. You have to come to him understanding, I'm about to get my miracle. You've been waiting a long time. And in some cases, at some points, you did lose faith. And you thought it was never going to happen. But I'm here to tell you, this is Miracle March. And God wants you to receive your miracle. And it's not too late. So he displayed his faith in the second part of verse 18 by simply asking Jesus. Now, before he left his house, according to the story, I am sure, even not being there, that they had pronounced her dead. He even said she was dead. And this is a man, a father... Jairus were her name. He, he, was a, he was a father. Now I'm pretty sure before he even sought out to find Jesus, because he came to Jesus, before he even looked for him, they had already checked their pulse. They did whatever they did in the Bible days and realized that a person was dead. But this was a man who had probably heard about Jesus, who had probably maybe even heard him preaching, and put his faith in Jesus. And that's how it's going to work for you and me. We hear the word of God preach. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When you hear the word of God preach, your, your most holy faith is built up. You may not have had hope before you watched this broadcast. You may not have even believed in Jesus. But like I said last week, the centurion soldier, he wasn't even a churchgoer. He wasn't a person that attended church. He wasn't a person that paid tithes. He wasn't a person that, that went to a Bible study. He was just somebody who saw Jesus probably at his post doing his job, doing his job on a post. And seeing Jesus and hearing about him, and the Romans was probably talking about him in the locker room. Hey, man, you hear about that guy named Jesus, how he walking around healing people? And I got, yeah, I'm going to sign him to a post next week to where he's going to be at. And, and, and his servant fell sick. He's like, you know what? I really love this servant, and I don't want him to die. And the physicians have done everything they can to heal him. I'm going to go to this Jesus, even though I'm not supposed to. I'm a centurion soldier. And that's what happens with us. We hear the word of God. We hear of the word of God, and we put our faith in it. You know what? I hear that preacher. He ain't the greatest sounding preacher. This is the unorthodox style of preaching, but I'm going I'm to put my faith in this Jesus he's talking about and get my miracle. I'm going to believe God for my miracle. Now, God created my body, so I believe God can heal this body. God created the man who created the money, so I believe God can fix my finances. I understand the creditors and the bankers that I can't have that house, but I think I'm putting my faith in God and believe God for that house anyway. I heard them say, my kid is no good or he ain't, he ain't never going to be no good. I'm not going to believe that. I'm going to believe what Jesus told me. So our second point came out of verse 18, the second part, where he, he, he displayed his faith in Jesus, but he said, just come and lay your hand on her. Now, what's different between him and the centurion soldiers, the centurion soldier says, speak the word only. He was specific about what he wanted Jesus to do. The centurion soldier out of the last week's study said, speak the word only. Now this ruler, this, this, this ruler said, come and lay your hands on her and she shall live. The reason why I made that point is because the Bible says, wherever your faith is, be it unto you. Some of us have enough faith. The centurion soldier had enough faith for Jesus to speak the word only. He said, I'm not fit that you should come under my house. Under my roof. I'm a centurion soldier. But if you speak the word only, I believe, because I believe who you are, that my servant will live. In this case, the ruler said, I want you to come and lay hands on her. 
So however you want God to perform your miracles is wherever your faith is, that's what you need to say. That's what you need to pray. Point number three, when we are part of a body of believers, we so often see other people get their miracles, get their healings, get their husbands, and get their wives. I'm compelled to tell you that Jesus has a miracle for you also. Jesus was on the way to see the ruler to raise the daughter, and we see in verses 20 through 22 that the woman with an issue of blood seized her chance to get her miracle when she saw Jesus walking by. Now what you need to understand about this, I don't want to get too deep. I try to keep this real plain. When Jesus was on his way to see the little girl who was dead, this woman with the issue of blood saw Jesus walking by. And she had heard of Jesus, obviously. And she, and she said within herself, as the scripture said, if I could just reach out and grab the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Right there, she activated her faith within herself. If I could just simply reach out and just touch him, my faith will be whole. So we see three different types of faith being displayed in order for people to receive their miracle. Number one, the centurion soldier from last week's story said, speak the word only. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm speaking the word only. The physical Jesus is not going to come to your rescue in your house or in your hospital room or to your banker or any of that stuff. That's not going to happen. So the, the centurion soldier said, speak the word only. Now, the other ruler in today's story said, come lay your hands on my daughter. Now we see the woman with the issue of blood saying, if I could just reach out and grab the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. So right there, we see three different types of faith displayed in receiving your miracle. One said, speak the word only. The other said, come lay hands. And this one, the one with the issue of blood, is saying, if I could touch him, she said within herself, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. So there was three types of miracles Three types of ways people's faith was activated in order to receive their miracle. So many times when I'm praying for people, sometimes I'm compelled to tell them to do different things. Well, you need to come to service next week and we're going to pray for you to receive your miracle. I don't know what God is doing in their life sometimes. Sometimes God needs you to do something to activate your faith in him. Now, obviously, I'm not Jesus, but sometimes people need to do stuff to activate their faith. Sometimes... The preacher may be compelled to tell you, well, God told me to tell you, give this amount of money. In doing so, you will activate your faith in Jesus. Now, you got to be careful for this because some people take advantage of people. Because they need a miracle, they're kind of open, and they'll do almost anything sometimes to receive their miracle. You can't financially pay to receive your miracle. But sometimes there are things that God will have you do to activate your faith to receive your miracle. Say, if a person sitting in a chair and they say, well, my leg is hurt and it's been hurtful, Jesus told me to tell you to stand up and walk. There will be things that you may get instructions on to activate your faith. And when you hear that, or when you, when you, when you hear that word spoke to you, that's what you must do. The centurion, or once again, the centurion soldier says, speak the word. This, this ruler in this story said, come lay your hands. And the woman with the issue of blood said, if I, if I may just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. She said within herself. So all of them made up their mind how they was going to receive their miracle according to their faith. Like I said, the centurion soldier had, had the faith to believe that the word was spoken, that his servant would be healed. That's what he believed. This ruler said, if you come and lay hands, my daughter will be alive. And she said within herself, the woman with the issue of blood said, if I could touch the hem of his garment... I will be made whole. And according to the scripture, every last one of them got their miracle. Every last one of them got their miracle according to where their faith was. They all had different things they said that they wanted Jesus to do in order to receive their miracle. And I'm saying to you that if the spirit is high in church and you feel good and you feel the spirit of God moving wherever you are, that's when you reach out. That's when you see that opportunity. I've been many, in many, many services in my life, and the spirit of the living God was high. We was praising God, or the case may be, or sometimes we'd be at a prayer service, and you'll feel the spirit really high. It's like the room has a thick cloud in it, and you'll feel that. And that's an opportunity for you to seize the opportunity to, to, to reach out and believe God for something supernatural, especially this month. 
This is a month that I believe God has preordained for you to receive your miracle. That's why I always tell people, why I got to come to church? Because the church is a place that was preordained and set up for the altar to be made, for the altar to be set, for the praises to go up. I ain't never went to Kroger's and they had an organ and drums in a frozen section. I ain't never went to the, to the skating rink or, or to the ice rink or to a basketball game and I see no organ and drums set up to praise God. See, the church is a place that was preordained to lift up the name of Jesus. And the Bible says when you be lifted, when he lift them up, praises will come down. Blessings will come down. When the praises go up, blessings will come down. So people say, well, why I got to go to church? Well, you don't have to go to church. But wherever your faith is, that is what you have to do. Because you'll see in this story, none of these people got their miracles in church. But a church is a place that when the spirit is high, you can feel Jesus going by and reach out and get your miracle. Now, I will say this about church. The physical Jesus is not walking around. So you need to be someplace where his spirit is moving. Yeah, he moves all over the earth, but there are places where he's lifted up. There are places where he's exalted. There are places where he, he is adored. There's places where he says, where there are two or three in my name, there I am in a mist. But there are places where the spirit is so thick that you can feel the power of God moving. So like I said, the verses to 20 to 22, the woman with the issue of blood seized her chest to get her miracle. Jesus was on his way to, per to perform one miracle, and she saw him, said, hold on, man, that's Jesus. Now, what you got to understand, like I said, I don't want to get too deep, is that he was a, it was about to be a, a Sabbath, and you wasn't supposed to touch a rabbi or a teacher in the high side. You wasn't supposed to do that. She could have been stoned to death because she was unclean because she had an issue of blood. She wasn't supposed to touch him, but her faith, a lot of times your faith may cause you to do something that you wouldn't do ordinarily. Like I said, if you're a man that's lame or you, you, you got some issues with your leg or something and the preacher speaks the word by faith saying, get up. Now, normally, if you're in a wheelchair and you get up, you're going to fall dead flat on your face. But if you feel the spirit of God moving and the preacher with the power through the power of God tell you to get up and you feel led to get up, don't let fear set in. Get up and get your miracle. Finally, our last point, the word was spoken that you will receive your miracle. Now it's time for you to believe. Understand that it is the enemy's job to make you lose faith and make you doubt. Like those laughing at Jesus when he said, the maid is not dead. You stand on the word of the living God. Right there in scriptures, it says, but when the people, in verse 24, he said unto them, give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. There are going to be people, if you tell them and you let them know that you believe in God for something, they may laugh at you. <coughs> Excuse me. There may be people that laugh at you because you said, I'm about to get a husband. I'm about to get a wife. God told me I'm going to get a house. What she mean she's going to get a house? She broke. She ain't got no money. There may be people to laugh you to scorn. You got to understand something. Whatever God told you is what you need to hold on to. I don't care if it ain't happened in 20, 30, 40, 50 years. If God said it, I believe it, and that's it. You cannot allow anything to enter in. You can't allow any doubt to enter into your mind. This is Miracle March, and we're believing God for some major steps. And I pray that you get this. Now, I said on my radio broadcast yesterday that even if in March comes and you're just not getting this word and you haven't received your miracle, we serve God, Jesus Christ. So there is, you can still receive your miracle by grabbing hold of this word and believing God for yourself. Now, we call this Miracle March. We're believing God for some miracles in March. Now, if they don't happen in March, we're still, we're still going to believe God for our miracles. But I believe that in my heart, this is a time that God has preordained for you to receive your miracle. It is not too late to receive your miracle. I don't care how long you've been waiting. I don't care what your bank statement says. I don't care what your credit is. And according to last week's story, the Satyrian soldier, I don't even care if you're even a churchgoer. If you're just a person that stumbled upon this broadcast and you're watching and you don't know much about this Jesus Christ, but you, you, you have enough faith to believe in him for your miracle, this is the time to do so. Whatever you're believing God for, this, whether it's a healing, deliverance, financial, a spouse. I've ministered to friends over the past couple of weeks who have just simply lost faith. They're tired. It's not going to happen. It ain't happen now. It ain't going to happen. I give up. I'm sick of talking about it. I've even talked to friends who talk about they're tired of going to church and they're tired of this. It's not going to happen. 
This woman had an issue of blood for 12 long years. And when she, when she heard the word, saw the word, she seized her opportunity, reached out, got her healing. I'm here to tell you it's not too late. Do not give up on your opportunity to receive a miracle. Do not give in. Don't do it. It's not too late. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. I'm an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. If you ever need us for anything, prayer, anything, feel free to call 614-723-9770. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. We thank you for the written word of the living God. Just like the centurion soldier, Father God, we know when, when we read the Bible, it is you speaking the word. And we know, Father God, because you're all-powerful, all-knowing, Lord Jesus, that you can speak the word only, and we can be healed, we can be delivered, we can be saved, we can be set free, we can be financially secure in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this, the written word. We thank you for the spoken word, Father God. We know it's going to bring forth the manifestation of your word, Father God. We thank and praise you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we ask and pray, Father God, that we receive our miracles this month in the name of Jesus. We're speaking those things that are not as though they are. We thank you, Father God, that you're not a man that you should lie to the Son of Man that you should repent. We thank you, Father God, that your word will not return unto you void, Lord Jesus. I pray right now in the name of Jesus for every apostle, bishop, every pastor, teacher, prophetess, prophet, in the name of Jesus. We pray for every lay person, every deacon, every singer. We pray for every sinner and every saint right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, send your ministry angels to sweep through the hospitals right now, touching those who need a touch from you. We reverse the curse right now in the name of Jesus. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper in every tongue that rises against us in judgment. We shall be able to condemn. We thank you, Father God, for your power and your anointing. We stand on it, backed up by the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We thank you, Father God, for miracle march. We thank you in the name of Jesus for giving us a revelation of your word, Lord Jesus. We stand on it, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. I'm an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. We love you, and most of all, Jesus love you. Me. And we ask and pray that you pray for us as we continue to preach this word. And next week, we will have another word concerning a miracle to increase and build your faith to receive your miracle. God bless you, and may heaven's face continually and always smile upon you.